Sponsored by Skillshare. Get two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. Link in the description. Microsoft Surface is a lot like Google Pixel. Both, ostensibly, exist as Halo products, meant to raise expectations and point the way for the bigger, broader ecosystem of device makers to follow. But they're also both often, if not the best, certainly favorites in class, get a ton of media and enthusiast attention alike, and eat up a lot of mind share, if not market share. And they both target Apple in their advertising. Of course, because despite Apple being a relatively small part of the market, targeting their own manufacturers, which are honestly their real competition, would be partner side. As a result, they always feel kind of held back, restricted, restrained, not allowed to really fully strut their stuff. And their success to date, I think, bears that out. They just don't sell as well as they should because they're pretty fantastic tech. Tech that by definition is forced to think different and tech that Apple could learn a thing or three from, including and especially this week's Microsoft event in New York City. I'm Renee Ritchie and this is All The New Surfaces. I've said it innumerable times already, the history of human technology is the history of foldables. From books to wallets, flip phones to laptops, we just love taking big wide things and folding them smaller if thicker to carry around. Eventually, we'll go that way with at least some modern mobile devices as well. Eventually. Apple's reportedly been kicking around foldable projects since back in the days of the iPhone 4, but hasn't found anything they'd be happy turning into a shipping product yet. For them, the technology just isn't mature enough. And that's okay. That's Apple. There were years of Windows Mobile and a decade of tablet PC before we got the iPhone and iPad, and Microsoft Spot before we got the Apple Watch. Apple wants to learn from this before they do that. But for us nerds, this is still super interesting. Now, what Microsoft showed off weren't technically foldables. They were more like hingeables. Tech media is gonna continue to misuse and misappropriate the term innovation to mean stunt or gimmick or dopamine hit to their increasingly bored and cynical brain stems, or in this case, experiment. And that's fine. That's the topic for a future video but experiment are what these are, and that's also fine. My colleague, Windows Central's Daniel Rubino has a full video up on all of this, so check that out. But in the meantime, here's my hot take. They're not single screen devices like Samsung's just launched Galaxy Fold or Huawei's still to come, Mate X, Mate 10, damn it Apple. They're dual screen devices, two identically sized displays hinged together. We've seen the concept before, multiple times, but this implementation is super slick with all the hardware panache that we've come to expect from Microsoft's Surface line. The Neo, the bigger of the two, has dual nine inch displays and runs Windows 10 10, Windows 10 X, damn it Apple, a new version of Windows based on the same Windows Core Core that also runs HoloLens 2 and Xbox One. Since the hinge bends all the way around, you can open it partially to use it like an AD&D player's handbook style tome. Lay it out flat like a Monopoly board for full-size tablet fun. Fold it all the way back like a paperback for more one-handed half-size tablet action or snap it shut to keep both those screens safe while not in use. You can also prop it up like a laptop and even flip around this really neat little hardware keyboard and mount it low to use the remaining screen like a giant emoji strewn touch bar or higher up to enable a faux touchpad. Two hinge screens aren't as awesome looking and certainly aren't as swipe across friendly as true foldable screens, but they also aren't as fragile either. The real end game here is true foldables with true touchscreen tech and full on haptic control simulation so you don't need accessories. The screen can just feel like keys or dials or sliders or whatever control surface you need or want. But we're still a long, long way from that. And this is a differently compromised idea from the Galaxy Fold to get us one differently diagonal step there. The Duo is a smaller version of the Neo with twin 5.6 inch displays. Microsoft is calling it a phone, but honestly, given the aspect ratio, it looks far more like those old Android tablets that had phone apps, which is probably why they don't show too many shots of people holding them up to their heads. And you know, in the era of AirPods and Surface Buds, I'm totally fine with that as well. I'd love it if iPads could take and make phone calls directly. Give me that phone app. Now the bigger news about the smaller Hingeable is that it runs not Windows 10X, but Android. Yeah, Android. People will try to frame this like, if you know Satya Nadella, then you totally saw this coming. 
But if you know Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer, then you know Microsoft totally never saw this coming. They never expected all of us to be running around with little Nix boxes in our pockets, surfing the web on KHTML-based browsers. The power of software, a PC in every home, Windows everywhere, that was their future. And I totally get that this is a pragmatic choice and probably a smart one. If you can't be Apple or Google, you better damn well be WeChat. But I also can't help but feel that we're all just a little bit less for it. A world where Microsoft could have scaled Windows Core down to phones would be a world with one more choice other than Apple and Google. But Android is so ubiquitous and so free, it's gonna take a company with as much gumption as Google to do to them what they did to Windows. And that's likely only gonna occur when the next paradigm shift occurs. So in my mind palace, I'm gonna pretend that this is just a stopgap, a way to buy time so Azure OS, a fully cloud-centric AI-powered operating system can ramp up and start being deployed across multi-form endpoints of all shapes and sizes. Yes, that is what I'm going to pretend, even while I try to figure out how Microsoft is gonna square their commitments to privacy with Google's all-consuming operating system running root level on their devices. Now, neither the Neo nor the Duo are coming to market until the end of 2020 at the earliest, more than a year from now. For the Neo, that's easy to understand. Microsoft is showing it off now because it's really less product and more ecosystem jump starter. Microsoft hopes, I think, all their device partners will try to meet or beat them to market, so there will be a critical enough hardware mass to compel software support from developers. And I mean, I hope, Windows Phone was terrific and inspired both Android and iOS towards more minimal design, but it never got developer support and so Microsoft MDK'd it. Likewise, Google, even with the strongest of strong arms at times, hasn't been able to get Android developers to make enough tablet-optimized apps to make Android tablets a thing, and they've MDK'd their own Pixel Slate line as well. So all that to say, all the capacitive input digits, all the crossed. The Duo delay is harder to understand though. Duo runs Android. And contrary to what we heard Microsoft say today, we have seen devices like this before. A lot of the same ideas from that Axon M, and more recently the LG G8X, are in evidence on the Surface Duo. Now the Duo certainly has more beautiful hardware than both of those, but by a year from now, well, those bezels won't be aging well. And in what I expect to be a broadening field of foldables by then, I don't think the centerline seam will either. Unless, of course, there's way more to its story than Microsoft has let on so far. And hey, maybe the combination of foldables and hingeables will prove popular and compelling enough to get developers all up on their jammy. But we've all gotten our hopes up enough in the past that it's totally fair to say no one should expect anything until we see it. Even if some of us would really love an Apple book, an iPad mini that would fold out into an iPad, and an iPad that would fold out into a full-sized Pro. Now, there were some actual shipping Surface products announced this week as well, and some of them were kinda all shades of audacious in their own right. Again, Daniel Rubino and Windows Central are all over this, but here's the scorching gist. The Surface Pro X, and I'm pretty sure it's X here, is like the 2018 iPad Pro redesigned for the Surface line. War on bezels, check. USB-C, check. Actually, check, check, because there's two of them. That's something I'd love to see on the iPad Pro. And the Surface Pro 10 runs Windows 10. No, not X, because there's not a company in tech that can seemingly resist making that letter numeral non-confusing, but Windows 10 for ARM. That's right, no Intel inside, no sticker on deck, none. It brings together the Snapdragon mobile DNA alongside an integrated AI accelerator. Maybe something akin to the 8CX Plus with Cairo just slightly faster than the 855 Plus and DirectX direct injected. I don't know, hopefully time will tell. Microsoft's device partners haven't exactly raced to get Windows on ARM products of their own onto the shelves. So this again might be as much prod as product. Either way, it just makes me salivate at the idea of a new MacBook running something A13X like. And like yesterday, not just for power efficiency either. At this point, just for the flat out power in that kind of profile. The other big silicon news was on the opposite end of the Surface Spectrum. The new 15 inch Surface Laptop 3 is also bereft of Intel and instead is packing AMD inside. Now, I'm far more excited about AMD's costs and core counts on desktop than I am mobile, but it's still great to see them making inroads into platform companies at all. We'll have to wait and see how they perform, of course, but while we do, I'll just be all over here low-key dreaming about a Threadripper iMac Pro. 
There were a lot of thoughtful, delightful little design touches across the Surface hardware line, including how the pen is hidden away inside the keyboard. But the biggest and best was internal access. I straight up kind of loved up the way Panos Penne just ripped the keyboard off the Surface laptop to show that it was more repairable, more upgradable than Surface's past. Now, everything is a compromise. Unibodies provide incredible strength and structural support, but they make replacement more all-encompassing and expensive. Pop-offs, well, they can pop off, just like snaps can be snapped off, but they make it much easier to get into the guts of the machine and, theoretically, more affordable to repair. I say theoretically only because there are reports that the new Surface Laptop is really only easier for Microsoft to get into and repair or upgrade for you with warranty intact, which is still better if not the best. And do-it-yourselfers are super resourceful, but it's such early days that it's hard to tell how exactly and legally that will play out. Besides, I'm an optimist. Either way, I love the idea. There'd have to be some trade-offs in terms of sleekness and solidity, of course, but having the ability to upgrade, even get upgraded, a storage module or memory module, even a communications module, wouldn't just be great for customers, it'd be great for sustainability efforts as well. I just seriously upgraded my camera for these videos and I wanna start shooting in raw light. And the idea of getting my MacBook Pro drive upgraded from two terabytes to four terabytes is just, <laughs> give it to me now. So hopefully this isn't just a first step for Microsoft, but a first shove in that direction for everyone in the industry. Now, if I was any good at animating up market trends like Evan from Polymatter, I'd show you exactly what I mean. But luckily, that's why there's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in video, audio, business, and more, including Evan's class on how to make an animated YouTube video, just like his Polymatter channel. It's intended as an introduction, but like he says, by the end of the course, you could have your first video uploaded to YouTube. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today and get two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. To sign up, visit the link in the description and start learning today. Thanks Skillshare and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So those are some quick thoughts on what Microsoft just announced and what, if anything, I'd like to see Apple take from all of it. But now, hit the like button if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and surface skip that bell dingus so YouTube will actually tell you when future videos go live. Then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you think of the announcements, of the tech, of the trends, of all of it? Thanks for watching and see you next video.